I've got a story here that I think is big, really big, because it's bound to have a terrific impact on business. I'm talking about a new market, a big new market, millions upon millions of new prospects with $15 billion to spend. In 2021, the number is over $2 trillion. And guess what? All of it's going to the white communities. While our black communities are depressed, there are food deserts all around the country where black people can't get fresh food. The schools are old, outdated, and dilapidated. And it's our fault for allowing ourselves to be bamboozled this way. That's right. I said 15 billion. That's a lot of money, isn't it? The surprising thing is that it's a fresh market, still full of opportunities. It grew up so fast, got so big in a hurry, that few of us realize its scope. Now, these days, nobody's likely to pass up chances to sell. And yet right here in our own front yard, there's a neglected market. There's money waiting to be spent. To get the story of this market, to be able to tell you the secret of selling the Negro, we did a lot of digging. We talked to leading businessmen, the customers, and the salesmen. We went to Washington, D.C. We set up cameras and other key points around the nation. And out of this all, there emerged a story, the story of a new market. Yes, this is the market we're talking about, the new Negro family. Their name is Wells or Wilson, Smith or Brown or Alexander or Breen. They live in Chicago, in Atlanta or New York, in Detroit, St. Louis, Los Angeles, any one of a thousand cities and towns. All over the country, families such as this are enjoying new prosperity. They have new interests, new standards of living, a buying power they've never enjoyed before. They're good prospects for practically all types of goods and services. All too often, though, they're overlooked prospects. Why? Because of some good, valid reason? No. They're overlooked because of mistaken ideas because of out-of-date ideas about how the Negro lives and how he buys. The truth is that one out of every three Negro families living in cities today owns its own home. That's Recently, we have been interested in a rising young market, one that represents a huge potential for goods and services. I'm referring to the new Negro market. The tremendous buying power of this group is backed, of course, by an increased earning power. The average Negro family's income is at a record high. In fact, since 1939, it has increased more than the average income of all other Americans. Just take a look at a few figures. An official Department of Commerce report shows that at least one-third of the Negroes living in cities earn from two to $5,000 a year. Today, the average Negro wage earner brings home a paycheck four times larger than the one he collected in 1939. As a whole, the Negro market has a total income of about $15 billion every year. And after taxes, Negro families still have many billions of dollars to spend. Here is a buying power that cannot help but have a tremendous effect on our national economy and on business prosperity in general. When these dollars are spent, for a wide range of goods, services, and employment. Business everywhere is bound to feel the impact. This was actually the wealth count that was in the black neighborhoods before we integrated into white society during the civil rights movement. This is when black people owned their own homes, operated their own businesses, and the wealth stayed in the community. But once the government started seeing the amount of dollars coming into white society, that's when they began studying us. Before we integrated into white society, black people were actually out earning white people. If we had continued on that same trajectory instead of integrating, black people would not only have tremendous wealth, we would also have political and social power to go along with it our neighborhoods would have continued to flourish. Crime would not be as rampant, and black business owners would have been able to employ our own people. 
The impact of this new buying force is so tremendous that actually in 14 major United States markets, a product cannot be number one without Negro support. A product must have the backing of this big new buying power to be a leader in the field. What do you have to sell? Chewing gum or cars? Toothpaste or transportation? Whatever it is, here are millions of prospects. And these prospects are everywhere. And Oklahoma is a unique space in terms of the number of African-American towns that were established. Some suggest upwards of 50 African-American towns. Between 1924 and 1928, Reverend S.S. Jones was going around documenting this sort of self-determined, vibrant African-American communities. You see the African-American educators, doctors, lawyers, landowners, oil barons. And I think that's what's so remarkable about this footage. To think that individuals, how many years out of slavery, are now owning oil wells that are producing 2,000 barrels a day. Is that not the ultimate American dream? Is that not the ultimate American story? It flies in the face of what I think some people consider part of African-American history and culture. And I think that that was one of the things that Oklahoma and what S.S. Jones is really kind of showing is that that African-American history and culture is not a monolith. And in a way, it became kind of like a marketing tool to encourage individuals to migrate, to move there, that this is a place where you can live, you can thrive and peacefully reside. There were still palpable racial tensions. There are lynchings, there's Jim Crow segregation, there's all of these things, and you still have an African-American community or many communities that really speak to the fortitude and resilience of Black people in this country. The positive impact we have on our communities and our culture when we come together is amazing. When you think of other cultures and why they've been able to persevere, it's because their economy is separate from white people. Mexicans have their own communities. Asians have their own communities, where their dollar circulates a minimum of eight times. The black community is the only community that is fully integrated into white society, and they're literally draining the life out of us. We pour all of our wealth into white society, then beg them for reparations. How does that make sense? Segregation is not a bad word, and we need to get used to it.